this is Chuck with National Rock Review, and I'm here with Eddie Velez from King. Belize. 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 Oh my God! Sorry, dude. Some asshole <laughs> spelled my name wrong in one of these videos, and now people keep calling me Eddie Velez. It's Belize. Belize. Sorry, yeah, man. That's fine. I butchered. Uh, fuck. Uh, damn. Somebody else's but name, and it's you know it's, I think it's a fuck Midwestern that. thing, Who man. Cares? Yeah. So you guys are almost uh, to the tail end of this tour. How's yeah, it going? We are at the end. Tomorrow's our last show with this tour. Yeah. Oh, seriously? Yeah. You guys are done. We are finished. Nice. What's yeah. what's next in the plans for you guys? Uh, we have a couple of headliners. I know we have a headliner out in like St. Louis and uh, Lubbock, Texas, and El Paso. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do uh, three shows before getting into stay. We'll, we'll stay in El Paso. Head into Juarez, Mexico, record a few songs. Oh, cool! And then, and then drive home. Cool, yeah. awesome. Yeah, nice. Fun. Yeah. So, uh, any highlights or lowlights you want to share from the tour so far? Oh, it's all been amazing. I mean, we've yeah. had some some good shows all the way around. I mean, yeah. It's funny because the worst show I think we've had, and it wasn't even the performance wise. It was just audience wise, was in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Was, yeah, but it's always like that. The hometown? LA. Really? Hometown shows. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's a thing because you have your friends and family there who yeah. are super excited to see you, yeah. and then you have a whole bunch of other people who have bands. Yeah. So they sit there and they just critique. Yeah, the crossed arm thing. Note. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Note. I would have said yeah. some. He throaty. held that note too long. Yeah. Too long. Why isn't he fucking screaming? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> shut up, stupid. <laughs> You're not even from LA, pal. You moved from like Florida right. to Los Angeles to be a dick. <laughs> So you guys are on tour for the new album, Breathe the Water. It came out on seventh, I think, right? Yeah, Breathe in the Water. It came out. Uh, it came out on the seventh, but I, I still uh, say that it came out last week because we got screwed over on our CD. Oh, it didn't our actually... CD bundles and our purchases. It's been a fucking mess. It's been a mess. <laughs> uh, so the record came out uh, November seventh, but I say it came out last week. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, so we have we have product now. The, the release. Of our CD was on the seventh, and we didn't have any. Oh, really? yeah. So you guys are on tour and nothing. Yeah, no and, and, our, and our label was just like, "Oh, you guys should have bought some." It's like, nah. <laughs> Why do we have a label then? Right, uh, exactly. I don't get it, but yeah. we love them. We still love you guys. <laughs> so uh, I, I've been digging the album. It's 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 great, um, and I really like the song. Uh, Closer to the end. Closer to the end. Yeah, the solo in that is superb. Oh, just super that. cool, man. Yeah. Um, so, and I saw the interview you guys did with Fuse. You know, talking about sure. your heritage. Do you think that has any influence on the music you guys play? I don't. Or, or maybe. Does it, no. I don't know. I mean, it's all subconscious. You know, it just kind of flows out. We don't really yeah. think about it and go, "Ooh, we should do a real like." You yeah. Know, yeah, because there's some like, really like cool syncopated rhythms and oh man, what was that tune? Uh, Show me your love. Show me your love. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. These guys are telling me the back lines. So you just told me to do an interview. Huh? What do you want? What do you want from me? <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So what goes into the thought process when you guys are writing your music? What is uh, is it feeling more than anything? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, we don't really. Is it a band process where you guys are like working together, like doing a rehearsal, jamming, Kinda, and then come up yeah, with stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll sit and have a bunch of riff ideas and melody ideas, and, and yeah. I'll, I'll try to get a nucleus of the song and just try to get all these bits and pieces together. Yeah. And then I'll run over to the dudes and be like, "Hey, check it out. I recorded this. What do you think?" And you could tell from their faces whether or not they want to work on it, or, or, or they're you know, just if like, they're yeah, feeling it, it or not. So they need to check this out. Right. And they'll be like, "Oh, that's cool." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well then I'll put that aside and I'll bring right. something else. And they hell with this. And they're like, "Oh, that's great." Yeah. You can see the eyes light up instantly, yeah. and it's the, when the eyes light up. Everybody wants to jam to it stuff, and like yeah, add to it. That we keep working on. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So I've, um, you know, like. The genre monikers are, you know, some people say it's metal, some people say it's hard rock, stoner stuff. Yeah. Um, do you like prescribe to any of that kind of, of thing, it. or do you don't give a fuck? No, man, because that's the problem with music these days. You know, it's just like people automatically want to cram you into a hole that you don't yeah. fit into. Yeah. And if you don't fit in that hole, you're not going to be liked by right. that genre of people. You know, so we're not a real, we're not a heavy metal band. Yeah. We're not a super rock band. We're just a, a, a good band. We're just a good band that wants to write music that we like. And you could hear 
all our influences. And we do listen to metal. We do listen to rock. We do listen to everything from Megadeth to Pantera to Gojira to, to David Bowie to Prince. You know, it's, yeah. like, it's all in there. I mean, Blind Melon is, is a fine is, is a fine influence on us where you, you would never think. Yeah. They're a great band. <laughs> you were a great band. Yeah. So if it's good, we like it. Awesome. Yeah, if it's a good band, we'll, we'll dig the music and like yeah. you don't have to wear black all the time. <laughs> dye your hair and, and be a fucking yeah. put the jerk. corpse paint on and yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, you, know, you can embrace Satan and look normal. Too, you know? I just saw them a few months ago. They were awesome. Yeah, you know? yeah. I was side stage with them, headbanging. Awesome. You know? <laughs> and uh, you know, love all those bands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kids or even even the the. The purest, if you will, they just yeah. their, well, I think head, it, their heads are sometimes too far up their asses. Yeah. Well, and I think sometimes it does help some people to like say, you know, uh, they're a stoner rock band. But I also do agree that it like it paints a picture for some people that yeah. like. And honestly, like when somebody says it's a stoner band, I kind of start thinking of it as a band that's like, you know, into the music that they're playing, and they have like original roots that go back to like early blues or rock and roll sure. or Led Zeppelin or shit like that yeah. as opposed to you know they're Zeppelin just there to rock Sabbath. I mean come on those are the cream of the crop right there you know? yeah. if you don't like them you don't have a soul yeah. <laughs> so when you um, so being a guitar player do you gravitate more to like like original blues kind of stuff or do you like more of the rock and blues like at, you know Hendrix Steve Ray Vaughan sure or? I mean a lot of it and all of it you know yeah. what I mean Everything from Helen Wolf to, to Steve Ray Vaughan. Oh my God, Steve Ray Vaughan. I mean, yeah. that tone itself is <laughs> chop your head off just listening to him. I know. Just listen to that guy play. And Sit then, watching him play. As a blues player, then yeah. listen to the other stuff like Lenny, for instance. Yeah. You know, that song, everybody falls yeah. in love with that song. It's Riviera Paradise. And those songs are not really yeah. blues songs. No, you know, no. It's like jazzy. These magical instrumentals yeah. that I don't care who you are. If yeah. you listen to that song, you're like, <laughs> yeah, man, this is good. Yeah, and that's what we try to like. You meant with uh, with King, you know. It's just like no matter. Yeah, you can feel that when you, when, yeah. with your music, um, it has a, sort of that live quality. Do you guys record it live? Like all of you guys. We together? try to get it as live as possible, but yeah, you know, I mean, I think if you do too many live things in a studio, you kind of choke the the magic of being in the studio. Yeah, you know, like a Jimmy Page who tracked a ton of guitars. It was an army of guitars. Yeah. You know, and, there's there's something beautiful about it all. It's like, a, like this cool little architect architecture, if you will. You know, bring you know, mounting these buildings and building it up and building it up and building it up right. on your canvas, which is the tape or the yeah. recording itself. Yeah. And then when you do a live painting, if you will, right. You know, you have to do things quicker and it has to be a little easier to gravitate to and, and make happen. So yeah. you got to be a little bit of a magician on stage and pull these things off as well. You know, Jimmy Page did that a lot. Where he yeah. All these like harmonies and going off in the record. Well, yeah, that, that guy was live. amazing that way. Oh, man, it was so great. <laughs> when he did him live, you know, he would do like these single note things and then he would play the harmony on top of that with, without it harmonizing. And right. It would just sound like he's doing like this, whoa, this wild thing, yeah. you know, and it's in reality he was just playing the the harmony part that was recorded, you know, yeah. and it's just, you know, you got to do that stuff, you know. Yeah. Because there's a lot of bands out there who are, who are pushing Spacebar on their computer live and they have all their harmonies yeah. on there they have other vocals they have other drum tracks yeah the whole backing like everything can be everything's yeah. on a computer and these dudes are jamming up they're pretending like they're yeah. playing live music they're not yeah they're not they're doing like rock and roll karaoke you yeah know? well it's like kind of going almost like back in time to like when um you know dick uh the, dick clark you know because yeah. everybody would lip sync that shit. oh it yeah, yeah. Like, totally it was not live. and it's funny because uh, there was a little band a uh, little group chastised called uh millie vanilli yeah where the guy <laughs> fucking killed himself because of the shit that they gave him but now yeah. live bands are doing this left and right, right. And you're like yeah well if you don't if you can't do it live you suck <laughs> yeah that's cool man so uh uh what was also i was gonna ask you sorry um, so, like, kind of related to the live shows, um, it seems like I, I do a lot of stuff with, like, local bands here in Michigan, um, just covering them, and it seems like sometimes there's, there's bands that get a following, they're very good bands, yeah. but it's like pulling teeth to get people to come to shows. Oh, for sure. And so do you guys, have you experienced that yourselves? All the time. I mean, we, we could do a headline 
gig and there would be like a hundred or sixty people, and then that's a good night. Yeah. You know, we'll we'll play another place where there's like four or five people. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because I don't know if you've heard of a band called Crowbot. Yep. And uh, they're doing really well. Yep. And uh, yeah, they it's were funny. just in Flint not too long ago. Right on. Yeah. So good guys, great kids, cool band. Uh, we we had a run with them. It was it was us. It was King Crowbot and a band called Antimortem who are no longer with us. Uh huh. Um, and uh, it's funny because we'll, we'll we'll be doing a run just recent, very as recent as like three weeks ago. Yeah. And they'll be like, hey, you know who you guys should get a tour with? You guys should take out fucking Crowbot. <laughs> we're like, yeah, that tour happened. It happened about a year and a half ago. It was awesome. It was yeah. King, Crowbot, and Andy Mortem. Yeah. And 11 people would show up. Oh, night. fuck. And they're like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, that's just the state of music where nobody gives a shit. If it's not on Facebook right in front of you, yeah. they don't care. Yeah. You know, people don't give a crap. So what are, you, what are you guys thinking, like, as far as your strategy for your band, you know, in this time when everybody's, like, you know, only has, like, one second to think about shit? Yeah. Um, to make sure that, or do you care as far as like making course, sure that? we care, but I mean, there's really nothing we could do. I mean, aside from going backwards and doing like flyering and stuff like that, but you know, people don't care nowadays, you know, um, it's sad to say, but it's the truth. You know, nobody cares about the music. Nobody cares how it happens. Nobody right. cares about what it takes to, to make a record yeah. and go into a studio. I mean, I lived in Texas for two months, you know, with a machine who produced this album. Yeah. You know, we were up in the morning, we were recording, we were getting all the tones, we were dialing it all in and singing and making sure all the parts were right. Yeah. And it took a very long time to do that. And then it went into mastering and then it went into the whole you know, production of it yep. all. And, you know, it doesn't come out of thin air. You know, people right. just automatically, oh, there's a band? Oh, I like their music and that's it. Yeah. You know? That's yeah. it. They don't, they don't care about... And you get like two tunes that they download and that's yeah. about it. They don't and really that's care the about the whole album. about Breathe in the Water was, I was like, in my head, I was thinking like, you know, we have to make this album just as good as a song. Yeah. You know, so you listen from beginning to end, you know, there's a very... That's true. 60s, 70s quality to building this record. You right. Know? Each cut has its own kind of personality, yeah. but it all fits together. And it blends in, and I have these interludes that kind of yeah. tie and, and, and end certain sections where there's four parts, and then you know an interlude will ch chime in, and then there's four more songs, and there's another interlude that, that ends that section, and then the finishing of the, of the album, yeah. and then there's a, a finish product at the end of the of, of Brain of the Water Am. Yeah, it's a great album, man. It's super Thanks good. Thanks so much. Um, so, one thing I usually ask, kind of like off the wall, kind of kind of question: What do you guys Let's like make to? Let's it quick because I got to run downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you What do you guys like to eat for breakfast? Breakfast, yeah. man. We could eat anything from Wendy's to Power Bars. <laughs> it's, it's not what we like to eat for yeah. breakfast. It's what we have on the menu of whatever the hell gas station we were parked at that morning. Awesome, awesome, <laughs> man. Well, Eddie, thanks. Right on, man. Thank you.